You're listening to Money FM 89.3, and it's now time for Under the Radar with me, Chua Tian Tian. Now, today we're going to talk about one of the world's largest express transportation companies. Our guest for today is from FedEx, a company that was founded by Frederick W. Smith as the Federal Express Corporation in 1971. And here's a fun fact about the company's name: the word "federal" suggested an interest in nationwide economic activity in the U.S. and was meant to resonate with the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank, which is a potential customer for the logistics player. But back to FedEx business: the firm recently reported fourth quarter earnings of. Four U.S. dollars and ninety-four cents per share, better than the analyst estimate of four U.S. dollars and eighty-six cents per share. Still, revenue came in below expectations, and more recently, we saw FedEx streamlining its air courier business by removing twenty-nine aircraft from its fleet to make its logistics network more flexible amid slowing global trade activities. So, how will such efforts aid FedEx in becoming leaner and more competitive against industry peers? And what is the road ahead? Well, for more, let's speak to Audrey Chong. VP Southeast Asia Operations at FedEx. Audrey, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tian Tian. And firstly, you know, thank you for having me, and I'm excited to be here today. Excited to have you on board with us as well. And Audrey, we've briefly touched on this in the introduction. Best to hear it from you, though. Tell us more about FedEx value proposition as a global air freight player, as well as your business model. Also, how does the Southeast Asia business fit in the entire company's portfolio? So FedEx value proposition is built upon our 50-year track record of delivering reliable and time-sensitive shipments worldwide. So each day at FedEx, we connect millions of individuals. Businesses and communities around the world with opportunities. Now, this is made possible with our extensive global coverage. We cover over 220 countries and territories. We have a robust fleet of over 87,000 vehicles and nearly 700 aircraft. And we also provide a comprehensive end-to-end solutions for our customers. Now, all of these enables customers. To focus on their core business while entrusting their logistical business to us. Now, when it comes to Southeast Asia, this region holds great importance in our company's portfolio of businesses. Now, we consider it a major growth engine due to various reasons, including its rapidly growing economy, large, youthful demographics, and also a strategic geographical position. Now this is why we continue to make significant investments in this region. Now, in addition to support the Southeast Asia's growing business needs on a regional level, we also play an important role in connecting businesses here with global markets seamlessly. Okay, and Audrey, talk about the Southeast Asia business. I understand you did mention some numbers earlier.、Uh, take us through your current scale within Southeast Asia. I believe FedEx Singapore serves over two hundred and twenty countries and territories, over one thousand two hundred staff members, one hundred and fifty-four vehicles. But、uh, what are we looking at when it comes to the wider Southeast Asia region? Just to share more, so FedEx established our presence in Southeast Asia some forty years ago. Having recognized the importance and potential of this region early on, so over the last four decades, we have established an extensive network and also introduced tailored offerings to cater to the growing、uh, needs of businesses and customers in this region. Now, across the region, we employ a dedicated workforce of、uh, over six thousand seven hundred employees. They work diligently to provide exceptional. Um, service and support to our customers. Now, our fleet of vehicles in the region exceeds thousand four hundred, enabling us to efficiently transport、um, packages and also meet the demands of our customers. Now, on an annual basis, we deliver around twenty four million packages in this region. I'm also proud that FedEx in Southeast Asia has backed over ten external accolades to be named. Uh, best employers by external HR agencies、uh, last year, and most recently, right here in Singapore, FedEx was among Singapore's top 15 best employers in a survey conducted by a research firm Statista,、uh, in collaboration with the Straits Times. We maintain our position as the first in the transportation 
and logistics industry. Wow, some very good numbers there. And uh, Audrey, on that note, which is your biggest market within Southeast Asia and why is this the case? Also, who would you define as your competitors within this space? Are we looking at competition with just the air freight players or do you define shipping companies, shipping lines as your competitors as well? Well, a major market for us within Southeast Asia would be Singapore. Now, since establishing our presence um, in 1984, we have clo worked closely with the Singapore government um, so to solidify our country's position as a global trade and logistics hub. Now, we work closely with EDB, Economic Development Board, uh, Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, as well as Changi Airport Group, uh, among others. Now, Singapore's strategic location, robust infrastructure, and business friendly environment, they have, it has attracted a large volume of international businesses, making it a vital gateway for companies operating in the region, and that includes FedEx. Now, in 2012, we, we enforced our commitment to Singapore by establishing our $97 million South Pacific Regional Hub. Now, this state-of-the-art facility serves as a central point for managing and coordinating our operations across Southeast Asia. Now, that said, we also recognize the importance of other key markets in the region, uh, Indonesia, as the region's largest economy presents uh, significant growth opportunities, while Vietnam, as we know, is emerging as an important manufacturing and export hub, attracting investments and driving logistics demand. Now, while we are primarily known for our expertise in air transportation and express delivery services, uh, what sets us apart from our comp competition would be our ability to provide end-to-end -end logistics solutions. Now, we understand our customers have diverse needs, ranging from parcels to heavyweight shipments, and we strive to meet these needs by offering comprehensive services that encompasses land, sea, and air transportation. Now, this integrated approach allows us to deliver seamless and efficient logistics solutions that enable our customers to streamline um, their supply chains and also optimize their operations. Now, our, our long-term strategy is to create a flexible, efficient, and intelligent global network. Which, maybe put it simply for our audience, it also means that you are in this whole integrated supply chain logistics business, which then puts you up against all the shipping players, air freight players, land transport operators as well. Let's very quickly, Audrey, take a look at FedEx fourth quarter earnings out in June. At a global level, we do see FedEx earning per share beat analysts' estimates at uh, four US dollars and ninety four cents per share, uh, but revenue came in below expectations. The guidance ahead seems flat as well. What is the situation like in Southeast Asia then? So, on a global level, we expect economic headwinds to remain a challenge. Uh, we continue to see reduced. Um, spending, consumer spending and a worsening global credit environment caused by inflation, uh, geopolitical uncertainty and other factors. Now, despite this, FedEx Corporation delivered adjusted operating margin of 6% in the last fiscal year, driven by new improvements and also continued execution of our cost actions. Now, we remain steadfast in our commitment to growth and profitability. Now, in our FedEx Express segment, we are targeting at double-digit year-on-year operating profit growth in this fiscal year by emphasizing increased efficiency in air and international shipments, including our operations in Southeast Asia. Now, like the rest of the world, Southeast Asia is impacted by current headwinds. However, what sets the region apart from the rest of the world would be its immense potential. Now, on top of being the world's fastest growing region, according to the IMF, many experts anticipate that ASEAN will break into the top five largest economies in the next five years. So once again, we view Southeast Asia as a major growth engine for us and we continue to cater our services and offerings to the needs 
of, of our customers in this region. And Audrey, as we remain optimistic on the road ahead, I do want to take a closer look at the headwinds you mentioned earlier as well. So I believe the IATA or the International Air Transport Association has uh, released some data on April 2023's global air cargo market. And it seems like global demand, if we measure it according to uh, cargo ton kilograms, so it seems like global demand for cargo was down about 6.6% on a yearly basis in April, uh, though this was an improvement from March this year. So why is global demand slowing? First of all, uh, no surprises there, but uh, what bearing does this have on prices as well? So the slowdown in global air cargo demand can primarily be attributed to the prevailing economic conditions that I mentioned just now and leading to overall reduced spending by consumers and businesses. Consequently, there is a decline in demand for air cargo or for cargo um, transportation for that matter. Now, additionally, some customers have chosen alternative uh, transportation modes such as um, sea freight or rail to manage costs effectively. Now, as a result, we have been adapting to the current market and innovating to ensure we continue to provide strong support to our customers. Now, as an example, in May this year, we introduced our international economy service, which offer an affordable solution for customers shipping non-urgent shipments um, to major markets worldwide. Now, since its launch, we have observed robust demand for this service in Southeast Asia. Now, we also continue to invest in technology. For example, we have digital tools such as a FedEx delivery manager, allowing customers to conveniently schedule when and where their shipment is delivered. Now, in Singapore, we also introduced the AI-powered robotic sorting arm at our sorting center and helps to drive overall efficiency. Now, we also offer solutions like picture proof of delivery, uh, which gives customers the assurance that their package has been delivered. Audrey, on that note, you know, we were talking about how um, we we're talking with some shipping lines earlier and talking about how prices have risen during that supply chain um, disruption during COVID days. And it seems like there's some normal normalization right now. What are you seeing on the ground then? Well, I think firstly, it is important um, to understand that customers today, they employ a multimodal transportation approach, considering factors such as the overall cost the urgency of delivery, as well as the type of goods being delivered. Now, during the pandemic, increased demand for air cargo shipments are driven by disruptions in the maritime industry, including port closures and also restricted ship movement. Now, as ports now operate um, normally, customers are naturally um, going back to their pre-pandemic pattern, um, including sea transportation for certain goods. Now, however, we also observed a demand for an option that combines the affordability of sea transportation with the speed of air transportation. Now, this led us um, to the launch of uh, our international economy services. Now, FedEx has the uh, capabilities to offer air, sea, and ground delivery options for our customers. Now, we help our customers to compete and win with the world's smartest logistics network. And Audrey, let's wrap up by talking about the road ahead. FedEx on a global level plans to remove uh, 29 aircraft from its fleet this year amid slowing uh, global trade. Uh, it wants to become more nimble by uh, adding another 55 aircraft to its fleet. But this time round, majority of the aircraft are smaller feeder aircrafts operated by contractors. Is this the case for Southeast Asia? How are you streamlining operations amid the current economic climate then? So in Southeast Asia, our current fleet of aircraft continues to be operated by us, which allows for efficient package transportation in this region. Now, combined with our commercial line haul, we are able to make deliveries where it needs to be in a timely manner. Now, as we prioritize meeting the demands of our customers, we are prepared to make further investments and build technology solutions to support them. Our goal in Southeast Asia is to be agile and also be responsive to the evolving needs of our customers 
people. So the first thing is to put customers at the center of everything we do. And we also focus on digital innovation and technology. Now, let me give you an example. Um, as mentioned earlier, we installed an AI-powered intelligent um, sorting robotic arm at our South Pacific Regional Hub in Singapore. Now, this robotic arm can sort up to 1,000 packages per hour, carrying up to 5 kilograms each time, and cover up to 100 destinations simultaneously with an accuracy of almost 99%. We put this, um, we invested in this technology uh, December last year. Now, such robotic, uh, such um, uh, sorting robots <clears throat> will play a vital role in enabling us to move towards round the clock sort operations. Now, we are also using insights from data to power our smart logistics. Our FedEx data work seems uses machine learning artificial intelligence, and other advanced analytical methods to improve complex shipping processes to prevent problems or make recommendations <clears throat> in real time. Excuse me. By leveraging tech-driven solutions, we aim to enhance efficiency, create greater convenience for our customers, and also continue delivering exceptional service in Southeast Asia. And uh, well, Audrey, let's head back home to Singapore. FedEx has partnered uh, a subsidiary of IMDA called the Pick Network to provide parcel locker delivery services to its customers, to your customers rather. What is the rationale behind this move and to what extent is it in line with your global efforts to sort of streamline operations and become more flexible? So the rationale behind collaborating with Pick Network is to meet the evolving demands of consumers and also enhance um, their delivery experience. Now, so in fact, we started this partnership with Pick Network a few years ago during its pilot phase. Now, we believe in offering um, alternate choices for our customers. Now, in today's context, where consumers are no longer confined to their homes as they were during the pandemic, the option of self-collection through parcel lockers provides them with uh, flexibility and also convenient that convenience that also aligns with their lifestyles. Uh, they can choose a location close to where they are, be it at the gyms or the schools uh, or at workplaces. So to support this trend, we also have announced um, collaboration uh, with another partner in Singapore uh, and added over 800 new self-collection points for customers. That brings our total self-collection points to over 2,000 across the country that, prov that provides convenience for our customers. So from an operational perspective, uh, self-collection self -collection play a crucial role in reducing the number of unsuccessful deliveries and delivery attempts, contributing to greater efficiency within our network. Now, this aligns perfectly with our commitment to streamline our operations and also uh, improve our overall service um, quality, as you mentioned just now, Tian Tian. But Audrey, don't mind me following up with this. There seems to be a trade-off for the customer as well when compared to door-to-door -door delivery. Uh, your thoughts on that? Is it more of a, a decision that was made to streamline the entire business on the company level? Or um, your thoughts on that trade-off for the customer? I think for the customers, right, I, I, you know, they want to have uh, more delivery options. So apart from um, the typical door-to-door -door del delivery, we also see a high take-up rate for self-collection. And I think it also probably stems from, you know, the, um, from the angle of sustainability. That's one. And also, I think uh, as importantly is the convenience of our customers, the recipients, you know, be it at the workplace, you know, at the MRT station, you know, or um, at their at their at their homes, you know, they could assess um, their shipments at any time that they want. So I think the convenience plays a significant piece uh, or significant um, driver to the choice of our customers. And before we let you go, Audrey, uh, take us through some exciting future plans for FedEx as far as Southeast Asia is concerned. What can we look forward to in the second half of this year? 
So over the past year, we have been expanding um, our presence in Southeast Asia to better serve our customers in this region. So we opened a new facility in Batam to support our Indonesia cross-border trade. We also established our direct commercial uh, presence in Cambodia to meet the country's um, growing international shipping demands. Now, while I'm unable to provide uh, specific, specific details at this time, so I can share that the relocation of our EMEA headquarters to Singapore by end of this year uh, is part of our broader commitment to investing in the country and strengthening our operations in Southeast Asia. Now, in addition, we have exciting milestones to look forward to in the coming year. We will be celebrating our 40th anniversary right here in Singapore and our 30th anniversary in Vietnam, highlighting our long-standing presence and dedication to this region. All right, exciting days indeed for FedEx, 40 indeed. years. That's a long time. Thanks a lot, Audrey. That was Audrey Cheong, VP Southeast Asia Operations at FedEx. Thank you very much for joining us on Money FM 89.3. Money FM 89.3